What else have we done, Ben? I mean, Tom. <laughs> oh, so you're not going to wear all that clattering? We'll, we'll probably hear it, but not nowhere near as badly. <laughs> you look a bit lost, Louis. I'm lost, yeah. I'm fucking lost in the What are you doing? <laughs> up in the morning love it it all started working on a series in my dad's shed i followed my dreams and joined the marines serving in afghanistan defenders were always part of me so here we are building custom machines with my awesome team in shropshire we are maker hi guys i'm dave and this is the maker channel so if you'd like to come with me, I'm going to tell you what we've been up to. So this is a Defender from Switzerland. The guy's been on to me now for about a year to get some upgrades on this car. And he finally made a family trip to come over here, much to his wife's um, dismay, I think. She, was, um, she basically said, what are we doing in Whitchurch and what are we doing in Shropshire? So anyway, appreciated that he bought this car to me. And you'll see in these next clips, as you can see under there, it's gone the whole hog with Ali Sport. We've got an intercooler, radiator, hoses under here. We've gone the full sumo bars upgrade. You'll see our Bilstein advanced black steering dampener. If you want to come around here. So he wanted some really chunky side steps. So we fabricated these really chunky side steps for him from scratch. Underneath guys, so we've gone with the Fox bypass shocks with adjustable, so we can adjustable his dampening and things like that. We've gone with the mild brake upgrade. We've gone with our full Swepco transmission oils gearbox oils, basically the works to give this car the ultimate reliability and look after all his gearbox and transmission. We've also given him a LOF heavy duty clutch, LOF heavy duty intermediate shaft. You'll see these pictures coming up now of all of that. Um, and this car has only done low miles guys, but because he actually, as you can see here, he actually off-roads this car properly and he wants it to be rugged and last. So this car is from Northern Ireland. There's a company called BLCR for those of you that live in Ireland and they are gonna be our maker distributors and maker outlet if you like. So if you've got a car in Ireland, it's, you can take it to them and we're actually gonna give them our sign seal approval to work on our cars. Anyway, they put this beautiful Defender together and if you wanna follow me around here. So this is our first engine kit that we sent to Ireland, believe it or not. So totally bolting kit. They bought the chassis from Marsland, same guys as ourselves. And they called me up and said, Dave, we want a bolting kit for their client, Stephen. Stephen was over the moon, fantastic guy. He said, Dave, I want this, this, and this. And you know what? He wanted the best of everything. I love that kind of client. So anyway, we got, let's say, balls deep into this car. We gave him stage two transfer case, six speed. We've gone for an LT1, punching 500 horsepower. And just look at the quality. Look at this. It's gleaming. The guys in Ireland have done a fantastic job, on par with ourselves. So you know what? We're proud to work with them. Heavy duty props, 1350s all round. And if you check out this Ben under here, this is just beautiful. And I love singing from my own um, trumpet if you like, but just look at that. If you can put engineering into porn, I think we've nailed it there. And as you know from today, I'd like to think Tom's told you how much love's gone into this exhaust system to the point it's engraved a scar in his face. 
I hope it's not a scar, but he put a nice burn in his face when a, a red hot V-band touched him yesterday. Of course, guys, we brand everything because we're proud of it. Inside this exhaust, guys, I want to, now we've got it off, we can show you. So if you want to look inside here then, let's get a bit of light behind you. Point your camera down there. You see the light? See like the angle in there? So inside there, that's a two into one, guys. And that basically merges the, the sounds to give you the ultimate V8 noise. Right, guys, so this one is a 110. Um, it's come from Northern Ireland. And it's someone that we sold one of his uh, LS3 engine mount kits to. And they've fit all the engine, done everything like that themselves. And they've nearly got there, but they, they didn't quite have the, the bits to do the exhaust and the wiring themselves. So it's come here and I've done a two and a half to three inch system for it, quad exit. And uh, yeah, it's, it's not as easy as you would imagine. It's, everyone looks at them and thinks, oh, it's a Land Rover, you've got loads of room. And they, it's a lot tighter than you'd think because you've got bits like props coming down and moving, axles, and it's, it's all got to go past and not anything really. So, so yeah, we've got it coming down here, past the props. We've got us flexes in there, so nothing's going to start cracking. Uh, and weaving through his own uh, cross member, holds alt transfer box through there into a big, nice silencer, so it's not too loud. Um, and then yeah, down towards the back, opens up to three inch. It's got some nice floor up and over the axle. Splitting into two for his quad exit. And uh, yeah, this side I've pretty much done. Coming down and splitting into two into the tips. And going through his nice trims for the back bumper. And then uh, the other side comes under the tank, sort of in line with anti-roll bar. And that bit I burnt my face on yesterday. <laughs> When I was popping it over axle, that was still a bit hot from welding it and uh, still got a bit of Savlon on, but we'll be all right. Um, and then, yeah, just over here, just got to make um, another exhaust hanger because they never really have them on this side. It's, um, yeah, you only really ever see them coming out of there. So we've got to make my own, own exhaust hanger. And then, yeah, come off of here and into there and we've got this quad exit. And yeah, should be good when it's done. Perfect timing.
This one didn't do that. <laughs> oh, you better. Ah, oh, you fucking. <laughs> we did all the work. Fuck you, man. <laughs> So guys, Jim Allen put his badge on this car, or maybe sold it, I think. So anyway, it's come to us. We've put some nice steps on the back of it. We've refreshed the cross member. If we built the car, guys, you wouldn't have to refresh this, okay? So take note of that, future clients. It's got a stainless steel exhaust system. Ian at IRB has done a lot of nice work on this car. Um, he installed the Fox Sharks. He did the AP brakes on the front, so we're not taking credit for that. So. But Carrie's now bought it to ourselves um, for some nice upgrades. So we've tidied up the cross member. Nice satin finish on that with our three-stage coating. So construction primer, anti-rust inhibitor like you saw in the last episode. So basically to make this cross member last, it's going to have some new mud flaps. And what else have we gone through? What else have we done, Louis? Oh, yeah, under here. We've got heavy duty. These are our heavy duty trailing arms powder coat in heavy duty black to make them last and as you can see guys salt is really eating things on these roads nowadays so we're trying to make things coatings better to make them last so super pro bushes all around make this car tight again make it feel like new the car's knocking on about 12 years old now so it needs a new life to life so super pro bushes all round. we've gone a loft heavy duty intermediate shaft in the gearbox again and what else are we doing we're going to go heavy duty clutch so this car's basically having a new lease of life if you like gearbox to another automatic gearbox but this one's got six gears and it's mechatronic which means the way the attitude of the gear changes is controlled by a computer so it means that it's constantly learning how to make the shifts nicer and smoother and faster so, and on top of that, we can speed up the process by plugging into it and, and changing the values to make it behave a bit more like what we want it to. And then, as well as that, with it being electronic, we can have a number of different modes, if you like. 
to like how modern cars have got tap up, tap down, where you can select the gear like it was a manual car. This can do that as well, pending a software update. Um, yeah, and, uh, and this is this particular gearbox is a 6L90E, so it's usually find in one of the top end Corvettes. It's like a stronger version of the 6L80E. But the challenge has been because the gearbox is designed to work with the computer that shares with the engine computer. The engine computer we're using for this particular build is standalone, which means it doesn't speak GM. It doesn't speak Chevrolet. So the challenge has been making the two talk to each other so that the engine doesn't destroy the gearbox and the gearbox knows how to control the engine to make the shifts nicer. So the way it does that is it pulls timing out of the engine in order, like in the process of it changing gear, it pulls the timing out of the engine, which lowers the power it's producing. It makes it easier for the gear to go into place. So what will the customer notice different between the old engine and the new engine? Well, I mean, the engine's the same essentially. It just, it behaves differently. Like before, it had a 4L60 on it. Like if you were cruising at 60 mile an hour, you'd be doing like three and a half thousand RPM, which is all right. The engine's fine with that, but it's drinking fuel. It's just loud. It's not comfortable, you know. And it, like the rest of the truck is comfortable, so you you want to be cruising at you know 1500, 1800 RPM, something like that. So having the two extra gears enables that to happen. Like you can cruise around quite comfortably now. And then when you put your foot in it and you want it to go, the computer calculates the best place for it to change gear to put you into the, the peak of the power band for the engine. So you're not waiting for the engine to catch up with the gearbox. So it's an even more... Yes, exactly. With manual mode. Obviously, we're not speeding, we're just making progress quickly. Man, I wake you up in the morning. Um, what, I will, what I'm doing is I'm making sure that it doesn't change its, like, so like I say about it learning, right? It does learning and then it doesn't save what it's learned until you turn it off. Uh, right. So every time I turn it off, I, just until, you know, I'm comfortable with it and I get to know it better and how it's behaving and everything, I want to see how much it's, it's making changes under its adaptions. Because if it's making a lot of changes, I know that there's something probably not quite bang on somewhere, and I can pick, I can speed the process up by identifying the changes that it feels the need to make, and make those changes at uh, like its base, if you like, so its foundations of where it's taking its values from, rather than having to do drive cycles, waiting for it to learn for things to get nicer and faster. You can just sort of take note of the data that you've gathered. Like every time I go out, we can wirelessly log everything the engine and gearbox is doing. So every time I do that, the data has changed. Now, every time I make a change to the base of, of its values, the changes that the computers are making are getting smaller. So the closer to zero means the more accurate that you've got the base, if you like.
So what we're doing here, Dave, who owns this van, is big into his e-biking, competes to a good level. And when he goes to an event, he needs to put his van on charge. So basically, we've come up with 100 amp, actually 120 amp, secondary battery. The van's going to charge that battery on the move. And we're giving him a 3000 watt inverter to juice the bikes up, obviously, in between events. So as you come over here, we've gone with a Jorite modified sine wave 3000 inverter. Jorite split charge, isolator so we can isolate things in case anything goes wrong. And I'd like to think this 3000 watt inverter is going to do the job. So if you need mobile power, give us a shout. A few moments later. Go for it. So that's it guys for another fucking hell busy day, right? And I thought I was going to plan YouTube today. Said to Chris and Ben, right, we're going to structure this, but it didn't happen, guys. Customers came in thick and fast. People keep cold calling me, which drives me mad. Oh, can you just change my tires? Can you just fit a wheel? Can you just weld me a wheel? But I say yes, because I hate letting people down. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please like, subscribe, and share, okay? Share the love, guys, and don't forget, right, we are going to... I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll leave it for the next episode, right? Don't forget this best episode, sorry, best comment is still hanging in there, right? Leave me a really structured comment. There's two people that are currently contenders and I know who they are, and one of them owns a wolf, so that'll give you a good clue, okay? And the other one's called Ollie. So I might even give you two dry flanges each, so you have to buy the other two. That'd be quite funny, wouldn't it? But anyway, we'll leave you there. Thanks again. Bye-bye. <laughs>